Thanks fellow planeswalkers, I'm James, welcome back to the channel. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section below for the algorithm, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. So we're going to do a Lunas Cryptozoologist deck. This is a Simic Commander, it is a 1-2 Snake Elf Scout that says whenever an another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, investigate. Tap, sacrifice, X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non-land permanent card uh, with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. That player puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. So basically this is going to be a Lunas Crypto Cryptozoologist combo list. Everything's going to really fuel that non-token creature part and also the activated ability to pretty much Play your entire, uh, play your opponent's entire libraries, and then swing out for the win. So we have a couple ways to ramp and card draw in this deck. Uh, we have the usual rocks like Soul Ring and Arcane Signet. Uh, we also have all of my favorite uh, mana dorks like Birds of Paradise here. Uh, it is the one drop taps for any color of mana. We also have uh, Elvish Mystic, Finehorn Elves, Lanawa Elves, uh, and there's a couple here that we haven't seen before on the channel here, and that is Academy Manufacturer is the first one. It came out with Modern Horizons 2. It is a three drop, one three assembly worker artifact that says if you would create a clue, to uh, clue, food, or treasure token, create one of each instead. So when you're creating, uh, when you're casting creatures and making them hit the battlefield, uh, this will then make you a clue, food, and a treasure, which means you can gain life, draw cards and also tap and crack and add one mana to your mana pool. Uh, after that, we have Lotus Petal. It is a zero drop. It is a uh, zero drop artifact that taps and cracks for a uh, any color of mana. We have Wood Elves. Wood Elves is a two and a green for a one, one elf that says when an ETBs, you search a library for a forest card, put that card into play, then shuffle your library. So that's how we ramp. Oh, we also have Coiling Oracle. Sorry, I missed that one. It is Simic for a one, one snake elf druid. It says when an ETBs, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land, you may put it onto the battlefield uh, tapped. No, sorry, you just put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, you put that card into your hand. Sorry, I always thought that card came in, that, that one came in tapped. So we have uh, 10 ways to draw cards outside of just getting a lot of uh, clue tokens off the investigate trigger on Lunas. We have Beast Whisperer. It is two and two green for a two, three. This is whenever you cast a creature spell, you draw a card. You're going to be casting a lot of creature spells in this deck. We have Growth Spiral. It is Simic for an instant that says you draw a card and you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. We have Ice Fang Quaddle. It is a Simic 1 1 snake with flash flying. ETBs draws a cards and uh ice fang clodal has death touch as long as you control three or more uh snow permanents that's not really going to matter too much in this deck because we're not running that many snow permanents if you wanted to make that have death touch you could just be running snow covered lands uh we have idol of oblivion this is a two drop mana uh, sorry two drop artifact that has two activated abilities the first one's all we really want to worry about in this deck it taps to draw a card you can only activate this if you've created a a token this turn we have Muldrifter. it is four and a green for a two two Elemental with flying when an ETBs draw a card has evoke for two and a blue. We have Mystic Remora. I'm just going to mention this now. We have Mystic Mora and we also have Ristic Study. So they're in pretty much all of my blue decks, unfortunately. They're just really good cards and I'm trying to find a way to not build decks with them. Um, but we have Ponder as well. It is the one drop sorcery that says look at the top three cards of your library. You may put them back in any order, shuffle your library, then draw a card. We have Preordain. It is again one blue mana for a sorcery. Scry two, then draw one. We also have Wall of Blossoms, one and a green for a defender zero four plant wall that says when it ETBs you draw a card. Lots of card draw, lots of ramp. Now we have removal. This is in the forms of either counter spells or getting rid of permanents on the battlefield. Um, so we have Arcane Denial. I think we talked about this one on the two lane deck tech that we did. Uh, it is one in a blue for a counter target spell. Its controller may draw two cards and you may draw one card at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep. We have Beast Within, two and a green. Destroy target permanent. Its uh, controller makes a three, three green beast token. We have counter spell, two blue mana counter target spell. Fantastic, awesome. Moving on, we have Cyclonic Rift, one in a blue to bounce a permanent. You don't control the own owner's hand or you can overload it to bounce all of your opponent's non-land permanents. We have Fierce Guard. Guardianship. It is two and a blue for an instant that says town a target uh, non-creature spell, but it can be free if you have your commander. We have Flusterstorm, one blue for an instant that says uh, counter target spell unless it's, uh, sorry, counter target instant or sorcery spell unless its controller pays one and has storm. We have Nature's Claim, one green for an instant that says uh, destroy target artifact or enchantment. Its, it's controller gains full life. We have Pongify, one blue for an instant that says destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Its controller creates a 3-3 green 
ape creature token. We have rapid hybridiz hybridization. I love saying that card. Uh, it is one blue for an instant that does the same thing as Pongify. We also have Reality Shift. It is one and a blue for an instant that says uh, Exile Target Creature. Its controller manifests the top card of their library. Uh, we also have Reclamation Sage. It's two and a green for a 1 2 Elf Shaman. This is when ETBs, you may destroy target, artifact, or enchantment. Cool. That is all the necessities and the basics out of the way. So now this is what we wanted to be doing with the deck is we want to be able to abuse that ETB trigger on Lunas. We have some utility stuff here. Uh, we have, um, and I have all the utility enchantments here over here with Concordance Crossroad. It is a one green enchant world, which means every single creature on the battlefield gains haste. That's it. We have Leyline of Anticipation, two and two blue for an enchantment that says, if Leyline of, Leyline of Anticipation is in your opening hand, you may begin the game with it on the battlefield and you may cast spells as though they had flash. So that just really helps out. I mean, it's you, you're in Simic, why would you not run this? It gives you flash. Um, you wanna be able to do things on other people's turns all the time in blue and green just wants to be able to help you ramp. We have some utility artifacts here with Crystal Shard. This is a three, uh, this is a three <laughs> three drop artifact that has an activated ability for three tap or blue and tap return target creature with its hand unless its controller pays one. You're gonna be using this on your own creatures to kind of get more of those ETBs back out again. We have inspiring statuary. It is a three drop artifact that says non artifact spells you cast have improvised, which means your artifacts can help you tap. You're gonna be making a lot of artifacts with the investigate trigger on Lunas, which means you're gonna be able to basically just get free ramp. Uh, we have rings of bright hearth. It came out in. Win, but it's been reprinted in Commander Legends. It is a three, uh, three drop artifact that says whenever you activate an ability, if it isn't a mana ability, you may pay two generic mana. If you do copy that, uh, copy that ability, you may choose new targets for the copy. That's basically going to get you a second copy of your Lunas trigger, which is what I was going for. So you can uh, you can hit some hit one of your opponents, and then with the second one, hit a second opponent, and basically just go for gold there. We have a lot of our utility creatures here. We have Adrix and Nev Twin Casters. This is one of the brand new Commander 2021 uh, uh, Commander deck uh, face commanders. It is two and Simic for a 2 2 Merfolk Wizard with Ward 2, which means it costs uh, spells that target it cost two more. Uh, if more or if one or more tokens will be created under your control, twice that many of those tokens are created instead. So just another token double R. We have Agent of Treachery. It is five blue blue for a two three human rogue. This is when an ETBs you gain control of target permanent at the beginning of your end step. If you control three or more permanents you don't own, you draw three cards. So just another really cool way of drawing cards. We have another haste enable here with Crashing Drawbridge. It is two mana. Uh, for a 0-4 wall defender, it taps to gain, it taps to give all of your creatures haste until end of turn, which means you have to have it on the field for you know at least turn before you can give haste to everything else. But once it's on the field and, act and active, you're just going to give haste to everything, and that's what you kind of want here. Uh, we have Dead Eye Navigator. This is a just a straight combo piece with uh, Peregrine Drake, which is also in the deck. So you basically for seven mana, no, it's more than that. It is nine mana, I believe. Uh, you can get infinite mana. To then be able to cast creatures on and on and on and on and on and on and on again, uh, to then be able to uh, get more improvised triggers off, uh, sorry, investigate triggers off Lunas. Uh, we, offer, we also have Essex Fractal Bloom. We're going to be making a lot of tokens in this deck, so it's a really cool way of making uh, tokens, the, to the, uh, the clue tokens into other things. So Essex Fractal Bloom is a four and Simic for a four, four Fractal with flying. This is the first time you would create one or more tokens during each of your turns. You may exile, sorry, you may instead choose a creature other than Essex Fractal Bloom and create that many tokens that are copies of that creature. So we're going to be making a lot of tokens, and this is just a really cool way of uh, basically turning tokens into something else. Uh, we have Seedborn Muse. This is uh, three green green for a two four spirit. It lets you untap all permanents during each other player's untap step. We have Shrieking Drake. This is the combo piece that I was talking about with manuf with uh, it's a manufacturer assembly, manufact sorry academy manufacturer. So you want to be you want to have Lunas on the field with academy manufacturer, and then you want to have Shrieking Drake. And basically, what you can do is the um, 
the treasure token that you make off Academy Manufacturer, you can crack for the blue and then play Shrieking Drake again. Uh, play Shrieking Drake, bounce it back to your hand, get another clue token, which means you get another food token and just keep making infinite storm counts. Uh, we also have Tireless Tracker. It is two and a green for a human scout that says whenever a land enters battlefield under your control, you investigate. And whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a plus plus one counter on Tireless Tracker. We have a couple of token uh, interaction cards here as well. If I believe I've gone through all of the utility stuff. Yes, I have. So we have Panharmonicon, which is the first one. It is four mana artifact that says if an artifact or a creature enter them entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger that ability triggers an additional time so you play one creature you're going to get double the uh, atb triggers off lunas as well as double atb triggers off any other creature that you play we have parallel lives this is three and a green for an air yeah, for uh an enchantment that says if, if a effect would put one or more tokens on the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. All right, we have all that out of the way. We have a little bit of protection down here. If we want, if anyone board wipes us or anything, we have heroic intervention is one and a green for an instant. Permanence you control again, hexproof and indestructible till end of turn. We have a couple tutors in the deck as well. So we have fabricate that can go and get you your assembly manufacturer if you need. It is two and a blue for a sorcery that says you look for a artifact card, reveal it, and put it to your hand then shuffle your library we also have mystical tutor goes and gets you a uh, instant or sorcery to the top of your library for one blue we also have worldly tutor it, one green to go and get a creature to the top of your library uh you then uh, so you shuffle them put it on top of your library and then we have tamio's journal this is a really cool card that i kind of knew about for another deck that i was building um my friend gave it to me and was like hey put this in this deck and i'm like yeah it's gonna go all right but in this deck it is a powerhouse it is a five mana legendary artifact this is at the beginning of your upkeep investigate which means you put a you know a clue token onto the battlefield so you can then sack three clue tokens and search your library for a card and put that card into your hand then shuffle your library there's no need to reveal it or anything it's just a colorless uh clue way of like demonic tutoring i guess or you can do it in instant speed so it's like a vampiric tutor but to the hand um really really cool card in this deck and you want to be going and getting something that's going to help you kind of close out the game uh, we have some recursion here as well. We have Archaeomancer. It is two and two blue for a one, two. Goes and gets you a uh, target instant or sorcery card from the graveyard to your hand. We have Eternal Witness and Timeless Witness. They're both pretty much exactly the same thing. They're both going to uh, ETB and get you a card back from the graveyard to your hand. One is one uh, green green and the other one is two green green. And we'll just read Timeless Witness here now as well. So it basically does the same thing as what... Uh, Eternal Witness does, but also has Eternalize for five green green. And that means you can exile this card from your graveyard, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a four, four black zombie human shaman with no mana cost and Eternalize only as a sorcery. So if, if you have a little bit of extra floating mana around and you can't get Timeless, Wit Wizards, Timeless Witness out of the uh, graveyard, you can just, you know, exile it instead and get something else that you needed with the uh, the ETB of the Timeless Witness. We also have Noxious Revival. It is one Phyrexian mana or one green. So it's either two life or one green to put target uh, card from a graveyard on top of its owner's library. We also have Regrowth. It is one and a green. As to a, uh, it's a one and a green sorcery that lets you uh, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So now we have some untapping shenanigans to talk about here. We have Freed from the Real. It is two and a blue for an enchantment aura that you enchant a creature and it gains two activated abilities or this enchantment has two activated abilities, sorry. The first one is blue and you tap target creature or you can uh, blue to untap target creature. So if you had uh, any token doubler on the board and you wanted to keep using Lunas, uh, use Lunas. Uh, Academy Manufacturer, Shrieking Drake, and Freed from the Real to just get, you know, more and more clue tokens to then use the uh, the extra, you know, I guess it just makes infinite mana at that point there. So then you can just untap Lunas, sack as many um, clues as you want, play, your, you know, get all of your opponent's uh, non-land permanents out of, their, out of their library. And then you pretty much go from there. So we have some untapping... Uh, I guess they're just redundancy effects in the deck. We have Intruder Alarm, two and a blue. Uh, creatures don't untap during their controls on tap steps. Whenever a creature comes into play, you untap all creatures. Curious Follower is a Simic 2 2 Merfolk that taps to untap a target permanent. And then we have. Uh, 
Pim's Aura, and it is a one blue blue for an enchant creature that gains it, you know, basically the ability just to untap. That's the only thing we really worry about this in this is one blue to untap enchanted creature. All right, so after you've done everything in this deck wants to do, you've made infinite storm counts and you've made infinite mana and you've done everything that, you know, I like to do in magic because I'm a degenerate combo player now as Paul likes to call me. Um, we have some, we have a couple of game enders. If the tapping of Lunas doesn't really go through and you can't kind of get that online fast enough, oh, not even fast enough, you can't even just get that online. I have a couple of backups here. We have Chatterstorm, it came out in Modern Horizons 2. It is one and a green for a sorcery. Uh, create a 1-1 green squirrel creature token and it has Storm. I love this card. It's going to make you a crazy amount of squirrels because not only do squirrels, you know, not only does uh, Chatterfang Squirrel General get to play squirrels, I get to play squirrels in my Lunas deck. We have the little interaction combo here, of Finale of Devastation, after you've made all those little one ones. Uh, Finale of Devastation is X in green green for a sorcery. Search your library and or graveyard for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield. If you search your library this way, shuffle it. If 10, if X is 10 or more, creatures you control get plus X plus X and gain haze until end of turn. You want to be going and getting Crater Hoof. So Crater Hoof is five green 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 for a five five beast with haste. This has been an ETBs. Uh, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X till end of turn, where X is the great is the number of creatures you control. And then if that doesn't work, and you have all these clue tokens on the field, and you don't know what to do with them, and you can't you don't want to draw any more cards, you don't want to do anything like that, you can just use Rise and Shine. I love this card. It is a fantastic uh rare from Modern Horizons 2. It is one in a blue to make a target non-creature artifact you control becomes a 0-0 artifact creature. Put four plus and plus one counters on each artifact that became a creature this way, or you can overload it for six. So it's four blue blue to turn all of your artif turn all of your artifacts into four four creatures. They don't have trample, they don't have haste or anything. They don't, you know, they're, you're just gonna make a lot of them and then swing out and hopefully be able to go wide enough to kill all, you, all of your opponents. Uh, and that's where Concordance Crossroads comes into play where you can go and uh, Tamiyo's journal it up and then play it and then swing out and win the game. Um, we have a couple of lands that I wanted to talk about here just really quickly. We have Alchemist's Refuge. It's a land that taps for one colorless or you can, for Simic and tap, you can cast non-land cards as though they had flash. That's really cool. Um, I love that card. It works really well in the deck because you want to be casting things that in your opponent's turns and kind of helping yourself get into more things and kind of just going from there. We have Inventor's Fair. It's a legendary land that uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain a life. It also taps for colorless mana, but also has a tutor on it. So you can four and tap. So basically five mana because you sacrifice this and you search a library for an artifact card, reveal it, put it to your hand and shuffle your library. Activate this only if you control three or more artifacts. Uh, we also have Mystic Sanctuary. This is a really cool one as well. It basically gets you a instant or sorcery card back to the top of your library from the graveyard. Uh, if it comes in untapped, and it comes in untapped if you control three or more islands. And that's it. That is my Lunas Cryptozoologist Simic deck. I like this deck. I haven't had a chance to play with it yet. This is just version one of the deck. Um, I do like to go through and kind of give things a little bit more of a tune up, but this is pretty much the premise of how I wanted the deck to perform. Um, I was going through a lot of the Modern Horizons 2 commanders and a lot of them people were already building. And I know this one's pretty popular as well, but this was the one that kind of stood out to me as my kind of play style, as I wanted to give Paul the ability to build Garth one-eyed for the channel. Um, and yeah, with that, uh, I hope you guys liked the video, liked the deck tech. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment for the algorithm, and definitely subscribe to the channel and kind of share this with all of your friends. We release uh, videos here at least once a week on deck techs, and there's also the podcast that goes up on here as well. Don't forget to check that out, audio or video. Um, yeah, go and check that out. Do and do everything you want. Uh, if you want to get at us, you want to hit me up with some suggestions on this, you can do it at Twitter, uh, at CMDR at arms. It's also Instagram as well. Um, we also have our merch shirt, which you can find. It will be in the, uh, the link in the description of this video below. If you want to support us directly, you can do it at patreon.com forward slash commander at arms. And if you want to get any of these cards or anything else, sealed product or anything, use our TCG affiliate link, uh, tcg.com slash commander at arms. And with that, I will see you in the next deck tech. Peace. See ya.